everyone. Welcome back to Cherry Theory. My name is Melanzi, and today I am here to share the sixth strategy of the thirty-six, called "Make a Sound in the East, Then Strike in the West." I will also provide a modern interpretation of this strategy as well, with such a name as "Make a Sound in the East, Then Strike in the West." Sheng Dong Ji Xi. This strategy basically talks about how, in any battle, the element of surprise can provide an overwhelming advantage. Even when in a face-to-face -face situation with an enemy, surprise can still be employed by attacking where the least expected. Create an expectation in the enemy's mind through the use of a feint. Manipulate enemies to focus their resources somewhere before attacking elsewhere that is poorly defended. Tactically, this is also known as open feint. The historical story took place in August 205 BCE. The king of Wei suddenly rose in revolt against Liu Bang, despite the fact that he had surrendered earlier. As a result, Liu Bang sent his general Han Xin to put down the revolt in Wei country. The king of Wei appointed Bo Zhi as the general of his army and moved his elite troops to Puban, a town on the east bank of the Yellow River, to keep Han Xin's army under surveillance. Han Xin camped on the west bank of the Yellow River, where he assembled hundreds of ships alongside the river in preparation for a river crossing. When night fell, torches could be seen all across the west bank, and it appeared that Han Xin's army was ready to cross the river at any moment. Seeing this, the general of Wei, Bo Zhi, ordered his troops to guard the west bank of the river and to destroy any ships that tried to cross, in order to prevent Han Xin from crossing the Yellow River. However, unknown to Bo Zhi was that Han Xin had already sent the bulk of his forces to Xiayang. A place which is 80 kilometers up to the Yellow River. There, the army set up a temporary barrage across the river by using empty bottles and barrels, while the Wei army stayed at Puban for days to defend against a river crossing. Han Xin's army crossed the Yellow River and launched an attack on the capital of Wei. However, by the time the Wei general Bo Zhi heard the news, it was too late. Han Xin won the battle easily by using the strategy of make a sound in the east, then strike in the west. He made the Wei army believe they were going to cross the Yellow River at Puban by using the fire and torches to signal the enemy, but instead secretly crossing the Yellow River somewhere else. Okay, I have a map here. And let's quickly review what's happening in the story. So basically, we have the blue line representing the famous Yellow River. Since the king of Wei rose a revolt against Liu Bang, and Liu Bang sent his general Han Xin leading army towards to the Yellow River towards Wei. In order to put down the revolt in the country of Wei, the two stars representing both sides of armies. Where Bo Zhi was in the city of Puban, and preventing Han Xin's army for river crossing, and then Han Xin decided to use the strategy of making a sound in the east, then strike in the west to fight against Bo Zhi. Han Xin used lit his torches on fire to signal the enemy that he is going to cross the river from Puban. While secretly moving his army to Xiayang, which was not too far from Puban, where he used some barrels, empty bottles, and probably some ships too to cross the Yellow River and attack the capital of Wei, he won the battle easily. 
In military terms, there can be two types of feint. The first type is called an attack feint, and is designed to draw back the defensive forces towards to the point under attack. It is usually used as a diversion to force the enemy to concentrate more manpower into a given area, so that the opposite forces is then weaker in another area. The second type of feint is a retracted feint. This type of feint is performed by briefly engaging the enemy, then falsely retracting to prepare location. It is typically intended to draw the enemy into a prepare ambush. In summary, the spot where we intended to find must remain hidden because the enemy will have to prepare against a possible attack at a different points. And his forces will be then spread out too thin. If the enemy should strengthen his vanguard at the front of his army, he will weaken his rear, which is backside of his army. Should he strengthen his rear, he will weaken his vanguard. Wherever the enemy expects you to attack the place, which is he will reinform. When he does so, a part of his army is thus neutralized, meaning that they are not defending anything. At this point, direct your full strength at his neutralized forces. Well, what should happen if both sides of army employ the same fainting strategy? How about we take a quick journey back to the Three Kingdoms period in China? In the seventeenth chapter of the Romans of Three Kingdoms, it is stated that in one hundred ninety-eight A.D., Cao Cao led his troops to attack Nanyang City, and Cao Cao stayed near Nanyang and had a long battle with Zhang Xiao, the leader of Nanyang Army. In order to find a way to break the enemy, he rode around Nanyang City for three days. After that, he suddenly discovered that the bricks and soils on the southeast corner of the Nanyang City was colored differently. Some of the bricks looked more recent than the older bricks around them, which has led him to discover that the city wall was not as protected as it looks. So then he turned back to the camp and assembled his forces in the northwest of the city with a greater fanfare. He ordered a lead soldiers to assemble and sneak into the city from the southeast. What Cao Cao used was that to attack the west, then strike east. But he never expects that this strategy would lead him to lose the battle against Nanyang. Yes, you heard me right. Cao Cao lost the game by using this strategy of making a sound in the east, then strike at the west. If someone here knows about the art of war, then you would know this strategy was employed liberally throughout Chinese history. Cao Cao was very confident about using such a well-known strategy to win the battle. However, the battle strategist Jia Xu of Zhang Xiu had already learned to see through Cao Cao's tactics, so he offered a strategy to the general of Zhang Xiu, and he suggested to use Cao Cao's own strategy back at him in order to beat Cao Cao at his own game. To fight against Cao Cao's army, he made all the soldiers hide in the southeast of the city, waiting for the army to come to attack. And in order to confuse Cao Cao, he told the civilians of the northeast side of the city to pretend to be soldiers. Cao Cao was very happy to see this scene. Cao Cao decided to divide his army into two groups. One group is going to the southeast side of the city to distract when he saw to be Jia Xun's soldiers, while the other groups went to the northeast and tried to sneak into the city and through the weakened city wall. 
But as it turns out, Dashu's trap was waiting for his soldiers on the southeast side of the city. The fake soldiers started provoking Cao Cao's soldiers, but never actually engaging in the battle. All the civilians' soldiers were just bluff and no bite. And by the time Cao Cao's soldiers snuck through the northwest side of the city, Jia Xu's soldiers were already laying in hiding. They ambushed Cao Cao's soldiers, and since the army had been divided, Jia Xu's soldiers were able to make a quick work of Cao Cao's divided army. After defeating them, the real soldiers went to cover the civilians on the southeast side, who were acting as fake soldiers. Jia Xu was to be able to quickly and easily defeat Cao Cao by subcharging Cao Cao's strategy. Furthermore, the reason for Jia Xu's quickly defeat of Cao Cao's army was because Jia Xu was to be able to use his full army against Cao Cao's divided army in an ambush. While one half of the army was provoking fake soldiers, the real war was being fought, where Cao Cao never expects to see an army. This deceptive strategy, making a sound in the east to strike in the west, can be a double-edged sword. If you do not consider that the opponent could also be making the use of the same strategy as well, since the situation in a battlefield is always changing rapidly, you must be ready to understand the opponent's intentions based on what they are believing to be your intentions. If you are not unique to think in this way, then you can find yourself crushed in the same way as Cao Cao. So let's pretend this is the picture of the city Nanyang. Cao Cao came by and wanted to invade the city. However, he fought for a long time and he could not take over the city of Nanyang. One day, he circled around the city and eventually found some discolored bricks at the southeast corner. He wanted to make a surprise attack by using the strategy of make a sound in the east, then strike in the west. So he divided his army and sent the other half to the northwest corner. The leader of Nanyang already see through Cao Cao's tactics. And then, Nanyang leaders use Cao Cao's own strategy back at him. In order to beat Cao Cao at his own game, they prepare an ambush at the southeast corner. So they dress up the civilians as soldiers and send them to face Cao Cao's army in the northwest. Then they send a full army to the southeast to wait for Cao Cao's surprise attack. When half of Cao Cao's army snuck into the city, they faced the full force of Nanyang, and were easily defeated by being outnumbered. Then Nanyang's troops went to the northwest, where they faced the rest of Cao Cao's army and quickly defeated them as well. If you have watched my episode of a besieged way to rescue Zhao, then you would know that the implementation of any strategy depends on one condition. That is, the person who used the strategy must be smarter than the opponent. So, do you understand the meaning of this strategy now? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Well, let's quickly review making a sound in the east and then strike in the west. At its core, this strategy basically places a seed of information in your opponent's mind in order to deceive them, and then follow up with a sudden surprise strike. This strategy is also being used and mentioned in our daily lives frequently. This strategy uses a fake move in order to. Track the enemy. Basically, you use the fake moves to deceive your enemy in order to protect the main army, the primary army.
and then you have them to attack the enemy's weakness in the first place. You talk about the east, but actually you attack the west. The east you show to the enemy, well, it's just illusion. In our daily lives, we often use and hear the words "sheng dong zi xi." As we have already described, it refers to the deception of the enemy with fake actions and ensuring to hit enemy's vitals in the first attack. In doing so, we must be prepared to show that we have the necessary momentum to attack in the east, but actually attacking the west. Indeed, for a successful execution of this tactic, it is critical to maintain the illusion and win by surprise. The next question you might have is, "Well then, how can I can make a successful surprise?" In any battle, the elements of surprise can provide an overwhelming advantage, even when a face-to-face -face with enemy. Surprise can still be employed by attacking where he least expects it. The idea here is to get the enemy to focus his forces on one location and then attack a weakly defended spot. For instance, in boxing, fainting is a body movement or an incomplete attack used primarily to create a certain reaction from the opponent. The idea here is to create an opening or draw down the opponent into a controlled response, so that you may anticipate encounter with a prepared attack. In order for feints to be successful, they must make the opponent really believe that a real punch is coming. These days, I find that I can make use of this strategy to play games with my family and friends. For example, sometimes when I am at a restaurant with someone, I will wait until the dishes arrive at the table. If the dish looks particularly good and fits my appetite, I will make sure to set up my feint. I suddenly ask them to tell me about their week or describe something they are passionate about. There are two benefits. One, I can learn more about them and improve our friendship. And two, I can get the first dips on the food all on the table. Yeah, I really did that to my own siblings when I was a young girl because I was always greedy for more food. Years later, I told them about my strategy, and they realized that they were had fallen into my trap. And some of my friends also. <laughs> oh, by the way,、uh, just in case if you guys are wondering, in China, when a dish comes out of the kitchen, everyone at the table can share it together, unless you are too busy to telling me about your week or something that you passionate about. I would love to hearing it. Recently, I also read a story about a thief who was interested in robbing a particular house. One day, he announced to the homeowners and said that, "Hello, I am a thief, and I'm just warning you that on Saturday, your neighbor's house is going to be robbed." Saturday came, and the homeowner, being a nosy neighbor, decided to sit by the window and wait to catch the thief in action. However, instead of going to the neighbor's house, the thief came into the homeowner's house instead and helped himself to all his expensive jewelry. I believe you guys might have heard of like those kind of stories as well. Okay, modern interpretation. I have got some great ideas for you guys. One example of this strategy today is when you have to go to buy a car. The car salesman will try many different techniques to get you to stay and buy the car. However, if you pretend that you are not really interested and walk away, very often the salesman will come back around and give you a better offer. Of course, in order for this to work, your business should be in higher demand than the salesman's service.
Okay, now let's have a really quick look at the original Chinese text for "make a sound in the east, then strike in the west." This idiom is commonly heard in Chinese language, and its ideas are often followed in many many situations. 声东击西 make a sound in the east, then strike in the west. 原文敌至乱淬。不与坤下对上之相，立其不自主而取之。全句译文：敌人不能把握自己的前进方向，对我方有利，应乘机进攻，打击敌人。原文解析：此计是运用坤下对上之卦象的象影。比喻敌至乱淬而造成了错综复杂、危机四伏的处境，我军则要抓住敌人这不能自控的混乱之势，机动灵活的运用时东时西，四打四离，不攻而视他以攻，欲攻而又视之以不攻等战术，进一步造成敌人的错觉。出其不意的一举夺胜。译文解析 ：English translation: Make a feint to the east, but attack in the west. An attack is made in one direction to divert attention from the quarter where the real attack is to be made. Conceal the intentions and strike where they will. Faint and pretend to go east, while in reality attacking west. What exactly does this mean in English translation? In any battle, the element of surprise can provide an overwhelming advantage. Even when face to face with an enemy, surprise can still be employed by attacking where he least expects it. To do this, you must create an expectation in the enemy's mind through the use of a feint. Hope you guys learned something new today. Please share your thoughts with me on the comment below. And if you like the video, please give a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe my channel Cherry Theory and follow me on the Instagram as well. On this channel, I will posting more videos about language, literature, history, fables, and small bites of wisdom. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye bye.